Welcome you all to this media briefing. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Elijah Moholola. I am the UCT spokesperson. Thank you so much for joining us for this media briefing called by the Chair of Council to make an important announcement relating to the senior leadership at UCT. I'm going to quickly just let you know who we have from the UCT leadership in the room, and then I will take you through the format and a bit of uh, house rules, and then we will get underway. We have in our midst uh, the Chair of Council, Babala Mgonyama. She is with us. We also have the Vice Chancellor from UCT, uh, Professor Mamucheti Pageng. We also have a few of UCT colleagues. I'm not going to introduce them at this stage uh, because that will basically spill the beans insofar as why we are gathered here. So when the moment is appropriate, after the chair and the VC would have spoken, I'll let you know exactly who else is in the room. What we are going to, how we are going to flow, we're going to hear first from the chair of council, and thereafter we are going to hear from the VC, and then we will have a Q&A session where you will feel free to ask whatever question you may have in relation to what would have been discussed or addressed by the two leadership members of UCT. And then please note that you will stay muted throughout the conversation only when it's your turn to ask questions when we get to the Q&A, you will get automatically unmuted by the production team and then you may ask your question, but I'll explain this further when we get to the Q&A session. For now, without wasting further time, I'm going to hand over to the UCT Chair of Council, Ms. Baba Rangonyama. Good afternoon, and I, I want to thank you for making time uh, to be here with us today. So 2021 has been a particularly challenging year for the world and for us as the number one rated university in Africa. We had a number of challenges to, to grapple with. However, with the support of Council, our Senate, our executive team, our staff and students, we have been focused to address these challenges in a manner that will ensure that the integrity of our institution is protected and that we remain on course to achieve Vision 2030. So this vision is aimed at unleashing human potential to create a fair and just society. And I think, uh, colleagues, I have shared with you this vision at some point in time, as well as uh, the Vice Chancellor has done so. Today, we are hosting this briefing to share with you the key developments in the leadership structure of the university since the recent council meeting. And, and we are proud to announce a number of key appointments that have been made. I want to assure you we are resolute in our aim to establish a senior leadership team for the future that reflects the academic excellence of our university. A leadership team that is representative of the demographics of our country. These appointments speak to the university's pillar of excellence, sustainability and transformation. We are delighted to announce the appointment of Professor Eleluana Ramukondo as the Vice Chancellor for Transformation, Student Affairs and Social Responsibility, starting from 1 July 2022. Professor Ramukondo emerged as the suitable candidate with 17 members out of a panel of 21 mem members voting in her favor. She has also received more than 73% votes from our Senate and over 80% support from Council. Eleonore has an established track record as a scholar and experience in leadership role in our own institution. What's beautiful about this appointment, ladies and gentlemen, is that Eleonore is one of our own. 
She has risen through the ranks of our university from being a student to being a full professor. Having obtained her BSc, MSc and PhD qualification in occupational ther therapy here, she upheld her professional and academic standing whilst making a name for herself in the area of transformation in South Africa and abroad. Her scholarly is well established. She is currently based in the Department of Health and Re Rehabilitation Sciences in the Faculties of Health Sciences. As a current member of the Senior Executive Task Team and a member of Council, Professor Ramakhonda brings a wealth of experience and institutional knowledge to the task. Let me correct you, she, she is a current member of the Senior Executive Task Team and a former member of Council. She has a long track record in numerous leadership role, roles in the transformation arena. Most recently, uh, she has facilitated a dialogue on decolonizing the university's curriculum and developing a, a UCT curriculum framework. She served for a year as a special advisor on transformation to the vice chancellor and is the chair of UCT Academic Freedom Committee. Her appointment also underscores the many gains black women have made at the highest level of the university leadership. So Professor Ramakhonu has the track record required for this role. She understands our institutional culture and what is required therefore to change this culture. And I know she will be able to work closely with the Vice Chancellor, our Deputy Vice Chancellors, Deans and Executive Directors to implement our vision of a diverse and inclusive community. Uh, for me, though, colleagues, this is uh, less about Elewane, but more about this moment. It's about the journey that our university has embarked on over time, a journey that our council and senate have advocated and created so that people like Elewane can emerge. And, 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 and it, it, it is indeed exciting times for us. Let me go further uh, to another appointment. I have the pleasure of announcing that Professor Suki Goodman has been appointed as Dean of the Faculty of Health, of Commerce, sorry. She has been appointed as the Dean of Faculty of Commerce with effect from 1 January 2021. What's nice about her appointment is that she has also risen through the ranks of our university. She is a scholar in her own right. Uh, she holds a PhD, PhD, Master's and Honours in Organisational Psychology from UCT. She is the current head of the School of Management Studies and her prior role as head of the school and the, 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 the section of organizational psychology have prepared her with extensive leadership and management experience. Professor Goodman is highly acclaimed in her area of research, which includes the organizational behavior, program evaluation. She has published numerous peer-reviewed research articles and chapters in books. She teaches across both organizational psychology and program evaluation and has for many years taught courses at the book ends, first year and masters. In 2017, she was the recipient of the Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology of South Africa Presidential Merit Award for Academic Excellence. Professor Goodman is part of the National 
editorial board of the South African Journal of Industrial Psychology and a member of the South African Society for Monitoring and Evaluation. She was recognized for her dedication to institutional transformation in, in industrial and organizational psychology. What is particularly pleasing about these two appointments is that these are high flyers and they are women. These appointments most definitely give meaning and expression to our transformative agenda and more so both confirm the equity and uh, th they confirm that equity and excellence are not at odds with each other. Let me go further and talk about another appointment. We also appointed an executive director of finance, uh, Mr. Vincent Mohao Mutolo, with effect from 1 October 2021. He is our most recent senior appointment and joined UCT from the largest South African black owned accounting and advisory firm, SNG Grant Thornton, where he was partner. Mr. Motolo is a qualified chartered accountant and a registered auditor. Before joining SNG, he worked as a senior lecturer in applied auditing at the University of South Africa, UNISA, uh, where he also served on the executive committee for the College of Accounting Sciences. He's not new to the South African higher education environment. And, and, and when he was a partner at SNG, his clients included Vets University, University of Limpopo, and Central uh, University of Technology. So in our aim to continue to attract top talent, both at leadership position and across the institution, it should be noted that uh, since her appointment as the Vice Chancellor on 1 July 2018, Professor Mamukhet Pakeng has overseen 13 appointments to the senior leadership team. Or, as it is better known with the institution, it's called a leadership lehotla. So the, the institution continues to strive to be an employer of choice. The leadership lehotla itself it comprises of the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellors, the chief operating officer, the registrar, deans, and key executives. There are a few other appointment colleagues. I'm just going to summarize this for you. Uh, we have uh, appointed, I'm referring now to appointments that were made uh, previously, but I thought it's important that we highlight them for you as well. Mr. Puram Golombane was appointed on the 1st of February 2021 uh, as the Executive Director, Department of Student Affairs, and he has 20 years experience working with students and is well versed in higher education. Dr. Linda Mtusha is an Executive Director of Research with effect from 1 October 2020. Uh, was a senior lecturer, uh, a senior director of strategic initiative and administration at VETS. And she has a strong background and extensive experience in the research sector. Dr. Catherine Duggan, director of the Graduate School of Business with effect from 1 September 2020. And Dr. Duggan is an accomplished academic with more than 20 years of work in Africa and ex extensive experience at top global business school. We also have Associate Professor Lionel Green Thompson, Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences with effect from 15th of March 2020. He served as the Dean at the Sefako Mojato Health Sciences University and as an Assistant Dean at the University of, of Westwaterstrand. So we also appointed Associate Professor Shosa Kasi. Uh, she's Dean of Humanities uh, with effect from 15 December 2019. She too 
has a wealth of institutional knowledge and experience, having joined UCT's Department of Psychology in 2011. She's also the founder and first chairperson of the UCT Black Academic Caucus. We, we have Professor Mano Ramunzindela, the Dean of the Faculty of Science with effect from 1 March 2019. Having served on critical faculty committee, the UCT Council and the Senate Executive Committee, Professor Ramantindela represented UCT in the World Wide University Network, WN, and is founding co-chair of the WN Global Africa Group. We have Dr. Reno Mora, our Chief Operating Officer, with effect from Feb 1 February 2019, the role of CEO, CEO was a new position created to improve the efficiency of the university's operation. We appointed Professor Denu Chiro, the Dean of Faculty of Law with effect from 1 January 2019, who held various leadership positions in the faculty, uh, including acting dean in 2014 and the head of the Department of Public Law from 2009 to, to 2014. Ojala Sarko, it's executive director, libraries with effect from 1 January 2019, to bringing years of leadership in libraries in the higher education environment in particular. Uh, we have Richard John Van Hasten, the executive director in Information and, and, and Communication Technology Services with effect from 1 November 2018. And Mr. Van Hilsen brought a wealth of institutional experience, having served as the Director System Division within ICTS since 2014. Associate Professor Lina Roni, the Dean of Faculty of Commerce with effect from 22 October 2018, an award-winning teacher and researcher and crafter of African business case studies. She joined a UCT uh, in 2002. We appointed Mokhta Parker as an executive director property and services with effect from 1 July 2018. And Mr. Parker has exceptional experience in property services and development and has held senior management roles at several top companies since June 1995. You will notice that 11 of these key appointments were made from the designated groups. This supports our commitment to inclusivity, to transformation and excellence, and it aligns with Vision 2030. And these appointments are a great addition to, to a, a dynamic, a, a talented, and diverse leadership team which demonstrates UCT's commitment to, to again achieving our vision 2030 and, and, and its purpose of, of unleashing human potential for a fair and just society. We are looking forward to the new appointment joining the UCT leadership team and looking forward to their contribution in taking UCT to greater heights. I would like to take the opportunity to extend council's sincere thanks to the UCT executive for, for their sterling work in managing a difficult year. The continuing pandemic and new challenges brought by the fire. I also want to take uh, to thank all our stakeholders. We are proud to be associated with you and we are looking forward to the year ahead. Let's continue to make UCT and our country great in and great for Africa. I thank you. Go ahead, Elijah. Thank you so much to the Chair of Council, Babalongonyama. Just a quick recap before the VC comes on. The three appointments made in 2021, which are the new ones that really we are announcing today, is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Transformation Student Affairs and Social Responsiveness, Professor Eleluani Ramugondo, who is starting on the 1st of July 2022. We have the Dean of Commerce, 
Professor Suki Goodman, who is going to start on the 1st of January 2022. And then we have the Executive Director of Finance, Mr. Vincent Mutolo, who started actually last month on the 1st of October. I just needed to recap that, and you would have noted the rest of the other appointments that the Chair of Council alluded to as background. I will now hand over to the Vice Chancellor, and of course, thank you so much to the Chair of Council. Thank you very much, Elijah. I want to request um, Professor Ramugondo, Professor Suki Goodman, and um, Mr. Vincent Motolo to join me, to join me, switch on their cameras. Uh, so that uh, people can see them. Hi, Suki, good to see you. Um, there's Vincent, good to see you. Good to see you, El um, and, and the idea is for members of the media to see the three uh, appointments that we are announcing today. Of course, since I took office, we've made 14 appointments, and these three are the latest. And it's important to, to showcase them because all three of them are groundbreaking in their own way. Uh, as the Chair of Council explained about uh, uh, Professor um, Elelwani Ramugondo, we are proud as UCT that we are not just producing leaders for other universities, but we're producing leaders for our own university, as we can see in Professor Ramugondo, um, that um, a Black African, South African students uh, can also know that if they work really hard and they focus, they too can grow and can climb the ladder to getting to executive position. And Professor Ramugondo is a good example of that. This is the first time that we have someone who came here at first year and stayed on until they become an academic, establishing themselves internationally and becoming a DVC. And of course, Suki, uh, again, is a groundbreaking appointment in this way that often when we talk about transformation, we talk about it as if it's a job only for black people. It is for everyone. And Suki in her trajectory and work at UCT has proven that to us by driving it, uh, by being a scholar, an outstanding scholar, woman scholar at UCT, who also is an alumnus of UCT, uh, but who cares, uh, develops talent, um, and focuses on transformation and is it was the second winner of the Transformation Award, uh, Vice Chancellor's Transformation Award in 2019. Uh, first winner, actually, not the second. It was the first winner uh, of the Transformation uh, VC's Transformation Award in 2019, together with her Department of Management Sciences. And we are delighted that she stayed with us. Uh, Vincent uh, is groundbreaking appointment. And, and just to unpack this, that what people might not know is that Actually, um, Vincent is the first black um, executive director of finance that we are appointing at UCT. And we are delighted that um, he's not, it's not only us who are recognizing him as a leader, um, but he's also chair of SICA. He's a CA, he's also chair of SICA. And so uh, talent lives here at UCT and Vincent joins that uh, uh, talent here at UCT. Um, it's good to have a, an executive director of finance who's not only a CA, but has also worked as an academic, so has got a sense of the academic life as much as he has um, led a team of auditors to other universities in South Africa, and so he's got a sense of being an auditor going to other other um, uh, uh, universities um, uh, um, uh, uh, to audit the, 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 the university. So I hope uh, South Africa joins us in, in this celebration of these groundbreaking appointments. If we had time, I would talk a lot about the other uh, people that we have appointed since I took office, uh, but today we wanted to showcase these ones. All right. But but let me let me also thank uh, the chair of council for for her input uh, today and i i want it to be clear that these appointments that we are announcing will build up uct not only because of the individual leadership strengths of the people that we are presenting to you today but also because of the powerful teamwork that will arise as they collaborate with their fellow leaders in the leadership across the university. 
While many of our staff members are leaders in their respective fields, the management of an institution such as UCT is truly, truly a unique calling. Our goal as a university is not just to be the best in Africa, but to be the best for Africa. And this means that we are committed to building excellence within society as well as our institution by applying our combined expertise to address real world problems. For example, we are currently working on ways to make our campus environmentally sustainable. We do brilliant work, sustainability work, environmental sustainability work uh, that's recognized globally. And now we want to make our campus environmentally sustainable, including the ambitious goal of achieving close to net zero carbon emissions by the period uh, between 2030 and 2050. The idea here is that the solutions we apply might also help our neighboring communities. So South Africa will hear more and more next year in 2022 as we talk a lot about the sustainability work that we're doing on campus, our living lab and our Kusela Ikamva sustainability, campus sustainability project that we launched this year. We see the university campus as a microcosm of our society. So we look ways to we look for ways to address society's problems within our institution. And our vision 2030 speaks of disrupting old patterns and ways of doing things and unleashing human capacity to create a fair and just society. And this kind of impact requires focused leadership and strong teamwork in the midst of any challenge. It requires us to be focused and work together as a team. It means setting aside one's academic and research interests to serve the university community. And so on behalf of the university community or the UCT community, I want to thank each of these colleagues for being willing to make such selfless commitment and for applying their talents, their skills and hard won experience and wisdom to the good of the university and the academic project. I know that as they do that, we see it as service to UCT, but more than being a service to UCT, it's service to South Africa, the African continent, and a contribution to knowledge globally. So thank you very much, colleagues. Um, Elijah, I'll hand over to you. Thank you so much, VC, and uh, thank you so much to the new appointees at UCT. And I'm sure because the uh, Hambang line, let me be among the first to say congratulations to Professor Ramugondo, Professor Goodman, as well as uh, Mr. Motolo. What is going to follow next is uh, maybe even before what's going to follow next, you will note that we have put in the chat a link to our recent communication announcing the two appointments. So please do feel free to click on it for further details. As well, what is going to follow is that I'm going to be taking a few questions from members of the media. So if you are in our midst and you are from the media, I would ask that you raise your hand. We will recognize a few hands at a go. And once we have recognized you, we will unmute you. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask, please feel free to do so. This is your time. I'm going to look around to see if there's any hands. Um, and colleagues will, of course, assist in the background. Do we have any hands that have gone up? I don't seem to be seeing any hands. <laughs> so perhaps everything was clear, but also maybe just to remind members of the media presence here this afternoon that we do have opportunities for one on one interviews with both the chair as well as the VC, and we can make available the three appointments that were referred to this afternoon. We have them in the room and we can make them available for 
any further one-on-one -on -one interviews between now and half past six. So if you may please drop me a message on WhatsApp or any of the media team members, and we will then uh, uh, arrange accordingly. Maybe before we close, I'm going to check quickly with uh, the chair as well as the VC if they wish to make any closing remarks. Yes, yes, Elijah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, just to say that uh, 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 Professor Ramugondo is starting on the 1st of July. She's currently on sabbatical. And so we're going to continue with uh, Professor Martin Hall acting as Deputy Vice Chancellor Transformation and until Professor Ramugondo uh, takes office. And um, uh, Vincent has started and Suki is starting on the 1st of January. Um, we the transformation transformation journey is long and not easy, and we as UCT, uh, a global university um, with a proud African identity, uh, we will continue to drive con uh, transformation in the way that we've been doing, making sure that we continue with the understanding of excellence and transformation being interdependent if we want to. Um, if we want to create sustainability without the two working together interdependently, we will not be able to achieve transformation. We appreciate your interest and will be available, as uh, Elijah said, to respond to any questions that the media might have after this media conference. Thanks very much, Elijah. Thanks, VC. Can I check with your chair if you do have any closing remarks? And while I do that, can I also check, because we do have the luxury of time, we were supposed to end at six. Uh, I'll also check with uh, uh, Professor Ramugondo, Professor Goodman, as well as Mr. Mutolo, if they do wish to make any remarks for like two minutes or so. If you do wish, please do so. We do have a bit of time. Uh, let's, let's start, um, Elijah, uh, with uh, Professor Ramokondo and Susman first before before I close. Thanks, Chair. Can I call on you, Professor Ramugondo, Professor Goodman? Can I call on either of you to I guess we can go alphabetically in that particular order. Professor Ramugondo, you may go first. Okay, so this is one of those instances when you uh, wish you had a different uh, alphabet for your name <laughs> because we are definitely um, being put on the spot um, but uh, it makes sense uh, I think uh, you know to have a moment such as this one um, to celebrate um, for UCT um, yes I, I guess for people like me <laughs> who have uh, been around uh, for very long and uh, having often um, been starved uh, to, um, you know, we, as far as uh, celebrating one's university completely without um, misgivings, um, this is quite uh, a historical moment. Um, so I think there's a lot to be said about the leadership um, that we have uh, that made it possible um, for these three appointments and the other appointments that uh, were also uh, uh, listed today. Um, and I think that is something that uh, cannot be taken for granted. Um, it is not easy. Um, South Africa um, is not an easy uh, country. Um, it is uh, still reeling uh, from the legacies um, that we all know about, and uh, UCT um, is really just a microcosm of a very complex um, society, and and the challenge of transforming uh, a university that is celebrated, um, but uh, in many ways uh, um, can be exclusionary. Um, it's it's it, you know it, it goes without saying that uh, it's a challenge that we um, need to respect. You know, when you respect the challenge ahead, you prepare yourself uh, to serve uh, in ways that, uh, yeah, uh, very different um, from if you 
um, imagined um, that life is easy. Um, so yes, uh, uh, feel ready uh, to contribute as part of a team and uh, really very grateful, also grateful for everyone uh, that has supported uh, my journey in particular, but many others who struggle uh, at UCT. And uh, I think, um, yeah, there, there's many in the room that know who I am and what I stand for. And I, I, I also am very aware that the expectations uh, to deliver in the portfolio of transformation student affairs and social responsiveness are immense. Um, but with everyone's support, I know that we can do this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Goodman. Without uh, wasting any further time, you may come on, please. Thank you, um, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, let me kick off by just saying thank you to the Chair of Council and our VC for this opportunity to celebrate um, our appointment. It's deeply appreciated. Um, when the VC presented her three pillars, um, transformation, sustainability, and excellence, they resonated deep um, into my core. and. I, force, I saw an opportunity to continue to serve the University of Cape Town in a way that was meaningful um, and in a way that resonated. So um, I think um, my, my comments now are to say that I take those three pillars um, to heart um, and they define the way I feel and think about the University. Um, they define how I understand our role in helping to educate our students as they come through our hands and then go into the world of work, the kinds of citizens we hope um, they'll be and the role that we need to play in facilitating that transition. Um, and similarly, I take it seriously when I think about my colleagues in the Faculty of Commerce um, and how transformation is the core to our future. I don't think that we can think about teaching and research um, social engagement without pushing um, the transformation agenda and that our existence as this glorious institution revolves around that particular fulcrum. So my, I feel de deeply grateful to the Commerce Faculty, the Collection Committee and Council for um, approving my appointment and I dedicate myself to work to fortify the institution for what it stands for um, and for the good. Thank you. Thank you so much and last but not least we will hear from uh, Mr. Vincent Mutolo. Uh, thank you Elijah and good afternoon to everyone. Um, and thank you indeed to the Chair of Council and the VC uh, for celebrating our appointments. Uh, my appreciation further extends to UCT uh, management and my colleagues for warmly welcoming me to UCT and also uh, to Cape Town and also for exceptionally onboarding me. I was thoroughly impressed in how UCT was able to bring me on board and the way they have done it and the manner that they have done it. I think that served as a testament to me why we rated number one uh, in Africa. And it's also in the way you, uh, UCT cares for its people and treats its people. And uh, I've experienced that in how I have been welcomed into the university. Um, I'm absolutely excited to have joined UCT. And I suppose I've had affinity to higher education. And this is evidence in my career that the VC and the Chair of Council have outlined and communicated. And uh, uh, personally and professionally, I look forward as well to contributing uh, to the university, realizing its 2030 objectives. And in doing so, I'll use my skills, talents, and expertise. And I look forward to the support that I'll be receiving uh, from the management of which I'm part of, and as well from the rest of the staff of the university and various stakeholders and not forgetting our students in that as well. Thank you so much, Elijah.
Thank you so much to our three newly appointed members of the UCT leadership, Lekhotla. Maybe before I hand back to the chair for her closing remarks, can I check one more time if we do have any questions from members of the media? One final chance for you to say your say in case you did have anything you need to check, anything you need to post to the chair, the VC, or any of the three newly appointed members of the UCT leadership Lekhotla. I see a hand has gone up. Any other hand, if I may recognize one or two, Otherwise, we will go ahead with the one that has gone up. Okay, can we get Mr. Edwin Naidu to ask a question? Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Elijah. Uh, I'd like to find out, uh, well, congratulations on the appointments, firstly. I'd like to find out how this is going to, well, what are the hopes for UCT for these appointments in 2022 and you know taking the transformation agenda forward i think uh, the chair has alluded to a difficult period and you know obviously difficult periods move on uh, is this part of that and how do you see this translating into a different uh, atmosphere for uct thank you thank you so much edwin the vc i see you ready to take that one yes yes um i, I think Professor Ramgondo joins uh, the, uh, uh, the, to, uh, the leadership of the transformation uh, portfolio at a, at a very critical time. And it's, it's actually very good and fortunate for us that uh, she's from inside. So um, in many of the conversations, she's been part of the conversations. And in many of them, she's been driving the conversations, particularly when it comes to curriculum transformation. Um, uh, what this leadership is coming into the 2022 is a time when we actually start the implementation of our new employment equity plan. We've been busy under the leadership of um, uh, Emeritus Professor Martin Hall, working on our employment equity plan for 2022 to 2026. And what we've done uh, different from the past is that uh, we used to have a three year plan. Now we've changed to having five years and our employment equity targets um, uh, used to be aspirational. And uh, Professor Martin Hall has taken time to do an analysis of uh, our employment equity uh, stats across departments, across faculties, per department, per faculty, uh, so that we see what have we achieved, where are we now, and where do we want to be 2030, and how do we track that? And so the targets that we have now, each uh, the targets that we're developing now with our Employment Equity Plan is um, they are based on what each of the faculties, for example, um, uh, has achieved and they want to achieve uh, for the future. And we, we have also um, uh, uh, sort of cascaded the responsibility also to the deans so that faculties and, and departments are not um, sort of um, unnecessarily held accountable for institutional, for the institution achieving its targets, that each department can look at where are they now and what, what will they achieve and how do they track that going towards 2030, so that every year we can see how we're doing, particularly as, as faculties and as, as departments. So it's a critical time, and, um, and I'm sure each of the colleagues uh, uh, Vincent leading the Department of Finance, Suki leading uh, Faculty of Commerce, and Elelwani is uh, overseeing uh, transformation, student affairs, and social responsiveness um, will, will have their hands around the work uh, in terms of um, the first year of implementing um, a 20, uh, um, our new Employment Equity Plan. We are also as, as you may be aware that we our um, vision 2030 is newly appro approved and departments, many faculties and departments spent 2021 um, uh, uh, recontextualizing that or asking the question, what does it mean for their faculty or for their department? And um, a, a, a portfolio managers, the DVCs and the CEO have spent time saying, how do they kickstart this? And so 2022, uh, these colleagues joining us um, in 2022, get in at that time when 
when we looking towards the future with different eyes, of course, in the middle of um, some uncertainty given what's happening with the pandemic and, and also the many changes that are, are, are just happening in higher education, both locally and globally. So I think it's a, uh, you, you, you know, we, there's going to be a lot of activity, a lot of action that you will see. Um, and yeah, watch this space. Uh, um, uh, I, I would say, I would say, um, uh, Edwin, this time next year, we would be, we could be talking about what have we achieved um, uh, in, in 2022. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, VC, for that response. And once again, thank you, Edwin, for that question. Uh, considering that we are almost closer to six o'clock, I'm just gonna, I'm about to hand over to the Chair of Council so that she, she can do her closing remarks. But uh, before I do that, I just need to say thank you so much to all of you for joining us this afternoon. And also to remind members of the media that we do have the communication, the latest communication on Professor Ramugondo and Professor Goodman available on the link that was shared on the chat. We will also share some documentation via email with you. And finally, do remember that both the chair and the VC, as well as uh, the three members, uh, newly appointed members of the leadership beholder, are available for one-on-ones. Feel free to email or WhatsApp us and we will make arrangements accordingly. Thank you so much. I now hand over to the chair who will deliver her closing remarks and then she will close the media briefing. Thank you all. Thanks, Elijah. Um, uh, thank you very much. Let me uh, uh, start by uh, also responding to uh, that important question raised by uh, Mr. Edwin Naidu. Um, it, it, it's very important because when we make this appointment, it's, it, 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 we must have an objective, you know. We, we can't just make appointment or we shouldn't make appointment uh, in, in vain. In, in, in whatever we do, as, as UCT Council, as the Senate of the University, executive team, and, 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 and general stakeholders, be it staff, past and academic staff and students, uh, we are all guided by, by our vision 2030 in, 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 in every move. And, 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 and why is it so though? If you look at our vision 2030, it has got these three key pillars, which is your, your excellence, it is your transformation, and it is, um, it is our sustainability, you know. So we are the top university in Africa. So we top on excellence. Uh, there is no doubt in our mind. And we will continue to push the boundaries there. Where we really need to improve as a university and where we are working hard on is around the area of, of transformation and making sure that we are sustainable both socially and, and, and financially. So, so if you look at these appointments, therefore, they bring in that diversity, uh, Edwin, uh, that we talk about. And, and, and for, for, for us to be able to achieve our vision 2030, we do need to look carefully at the institutional institutional culture of the university. The people who can look at that institutional culture and drive the right culture within the university is people that are in touch with our society. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, Professor Goodman, uh, Mr. Mutolo and Professor Ramugono are the right people uh, to connect us uh, uh, very much so with, with our society. They, they understand the challenges that our society face and therefore they will be able to ensure that as a university, we do serve uh, our society. We, 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 we work with our society and not just uh, work for the society, but together we, we, we deliver on this important vision of unleashing human human potential, you know, and and what is more important though when you unleash this human potential is that we 
we, we want to make sure that we create a fair and just society. So we can only do that through the leadership of, 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 of our professors like Ramukhondo, Mr. Mocholo, and, and Professor Goodman. And let me congratulate you once more, uh, and, and, and I wish you all the best of luck. You have our support. Uh, that you should know. Let me thank you then in closing uh, all our guests in, in this room and all those who are not necessarily here, uh, but are, are listening on social media uh, or wherever they are. I really want to thank you for, for making time to be with us today. Let me thank in particular the media. I don't think we, we thanked you enough for going out there and informing the world about the UCT fires, you know. Uh, we were uh, in a bit of a, a trouble then, and, and you made sure that you, 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 you inform the whole society. And in that way, we got a lot of support, which we will never forget, you know. I want to say to you, City Ngozi, Baya Dangi, and thank you, thank you very much to the media team. And I want you not just to support us, but continue to hold us accountable. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>